Uh, six minutes after nine here on 3FM 92.7. This morning we're asking a simple question. How well are you able to speak your mother tongue, your local language? Yeah, how well are you able to speak that? And we want to connect that with culture and tradition. And we want to understand... How these are connected, language, culture, tradition, and what would happen if you lose your language and culture and tradition? If you lose your language, for example, would you lose your culture? Would you lose your tradition? What would that mean for your identity? And of recent concern has been how parents are all speaking just English with their children, or some even go to the extent of speaking French. And then you speak to their children and they do not understand any line of uh, their own mother tongue. Yesterday, something happened in Parliament. The Honorable Samnati George raised some concern. Listen to him. Today, with the advent of technology and the judo Christo religions, many of the things that many of the things that we refer to as our culture have been termed demonic practices. And so we are actually walking away from our culture. And Mr. Speaker, as a Dangwe boy from the Gandangwe ethnic group, I I I am I I am very very, very worried. Because, Mr. Speaker, in 2017, when I became member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram, in the Ningo Pram Pram district, there were 37 Akan language teachers, but there were only two Dangwe teachers. In a Dangwe community like Ningo, or district like Ningo and Pram Pram. And so there was a shortage of teachers. Mr. Speaker, I made a conscious effort within the, the first four years in office to work with the University of Education, Winneba, which had a bachelor's degree in Dangli. And we sponsored children to go and, and, and study and get the degree. But Mr. Speaker, that did not solve the problem. You then have the Ghana Education Service post these Dangli teachers Away. To, the, to, to the north or post them to the Ashanti region to go and teach social studies and, 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 and Bible knowledge when they studied Dangwe. So why are you posting them away? And so recently, the Gandangwe Tahulo Yaakwe took a stance and said they thought that the Ghana Education Service was intentionally working to kill some languages. Because, Mr. Speaker, if we have trained teachers in our local languages and there is a shortage of teachers in the region, why post them away to go and teach a different language? It makes absolutely no sense. And that's Samnate George. He's the member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram constituency and is worried about the extinction particularly of his mother tongue, uh, and my mother tongue as well, one of my mother tongues, uh, Dangbe. And is that the situation where you come from? Is your language going extinct? Are you able to speak it? Are you able to write it? Do you speak it with your children or your family? Do you still connect? I mean, for I know people who have nothing to do with a tribe or, um, you know, um, an ethnic group, but they speak all of it. So, for example, the office of the Gamanche on the 27th of January 2022 wrote something. Urgent notice from the office of the Gamanche regarding posting of Ga language teachers. Greetings from His Royal Majesty, King Takite Kuchuru II, Gamanche, and President of the Ga Traditional Council. And, and interestingly, you find even uh, chiefs and elders of the Ga state call it the Ga Traditional Council because people have called it the Ga Traditional Council. So it has been adulterated. His Royal Majesty wishes to advise all Ga language teachers who have been posted outside the Greater Accra region to go and teach other subjects there to please 
contact telephone numbers 030-295-5455. That's 030-295-5455 for directions. This matter is receiving His Majesty's urgent attention and there are uh, going to be reversals. Please act urgently. Signed by Justice Sir Cody Amensa, Chief of Staff uh, Office of the Government Chair. And then there's another that I saw, quite interesting if you ask me. And if you go onto our Facebook page, you will find that uh, on our Facebook page, that's 3FM 927, where Valley View University... Valley View University, of course, this was reversed, but this was the initial communication. February 3, 2021. Dear parents and guardians, facing out gun as a Ghanaian language for grade one to three pupils. And note grade one to three are formative years of, of a child. We wish to inform you that the management of the basic school is gradually facing out gun as a Ghanaian language starting from the 2021 academic year. This is due to the difficulty in getting qualified teachers to teach this subject. This unfortunate decision will affect the current pupils from basic one to three only. These classes uh, will only uh, offer Chi as a Ghanaian language in the school. The school will continue to offer the Chi or Ga option from basic four up to basic nine. I hope you will understand and bear with us. We appreciate your usual support and cooperation. Thank you. Signed by Beatrice Ama Intanu. She is the director of the school. Of course, they had to reverse because then the Ga traditional council intervened and asked questions and all of that. But... There are also those who make the argument that, for example, Greater Accra region, Ashanti region, um, the Volta region, Ho, the regional capital. In fact, if you look at all the regional capitals, they have become cosmopolitan. So you do not expect to hear the mother tongue or the primary language of the people in those places as much as you would hear because there will be a, a mix of other languages because people have traveled from far and near to come and join them in their societies and then they would have mixed with them. So, for example, in Accra, um, if you want to hail a taxi, sometimes, you know, you have, you're working with your cousins, you hail a taxi and then the first question they ask is, Master, Pacho Yeko, Koligono, Obeji Ahi. You know, so that's the first thing. And then the, the, the driver also could be even though a Gadangbe could then respond in P and then the, the, it moves on. So now the, the question is that should there be a national language aside English as the major lingua franca for us to have a conversation around it? Or should all the ethnic groups and tribes work assiduously to preserve their language, which would then feed into the culture and tradition of what it is that they're looking at. But first, before we go on to the phone lines and speak with Honorable uh, Nochikotoy, who is a member of the uh, Select Committee on Education in Parliament, in fact, is a ranking member, um, let's speak, let's hear Honorable Sam Okudeto Ablakwa. He spoke in Parliament after the Honorable Sam Nati George. This is what he also had to say about the ongoing conversation. Listen. So, Mr. Speaker, it's not only with our good compatriots in Zimala, even here in the capital. So, a number of languages are on the verge of extinction. And it is a matter that requires urgent national attention. The president, the executive arm, the minister of education, the minister for culture, Mr. Speaker, it is a matter that we must escalate to the highest of levels. Language is so important. That is what represents our heritage, our culture, our traditions. If the language goes extinct, the people are gone. Their culture is gone. Their identity is gone. So, Mr. Speaker, it's a very, very, very crucial matter. Those of us in the Volta region, we have discussed at our caucus meetings 
how it has become difficult in recent times to even get adequate supply of teachers who have been trained in the Ewe language to teach in our basic schools. They become very, very scarce. So across the board, I'm sure if we are to conduct a study in the Upper West on the Wale language, I'm sure it will be the same matter. So I am glad that the maker of the statement raises the issue of resourcing the Languages Bureau, making sure that our colleges of education have a deliberate stream of students who are being trained in our indigenous languages so that they can sustain the interest in these languages. That's the Honorable Sam Okujetua Blackwa, MP for North Tongue. He's also a former Deputy Minister of Education. On the phone line now is a ranking member of the Education Committee. Honorable, thank you very much indeed for your time. How are you, sir? Um, thank you very much. I'm fine. What about you? I am greater than Accra. Good to hear you. Thank God. Number one question on the minds of many Ghanaians is, do these members of parliament, from the maker of the statement yesterday to those who supported the statement with other arguments, do they have a legitimate concern or are they just crying wolf? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, to begin with, language is a tool for development. This is because anytime you wake up from bed and you want to do something in the day, you must think about what you want to do. And you must first of all think about it in a language. And mm -hmm. once you think about it in a language, you are given expression to whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. So everybody uses language for development. Right. Now, language is also dynamic. That if you don't take steps to protect your language within a very short time or in some years to come, you will see that your language will become extinct or it will not develop and you will lose your language. Right. That is why it is important that uh, the statement that was made yesterday had that aim of how do we develop, how do we protect our local languages. Now, the government has a policy. Right. Uh, with the education, uh, as far as I know, that at the basic level, the first three years, the instruction should be in the Ghanaian language. So if you go to the Volta region, the instruction should be in Pepe. So you learn English when it is time for English on the timetable. This is because you, the child must think in the language that he speaks very well. Mm. before you translate it into other things. Right. So uh, I don't think my colleagues did so just because they wanted to uh, talk about it. But I think they are concerned about it. But if we don't do anything about our languages, our local languages, and we depend only on the English language or any foreign language that we learn, uh, it will have a negative effect on us. So uh, let us mm. make our children learn their mother tongue right. very well, mm. understand it, speak it very well. Mm -hmm. Then from there, they can translate whatever they are now thinking about what they have learned into right. the English language or any other foreign language. I see. So it was not for fun. Mm. It's a very genuine concern they have raised. And uh, we must work towards this. Mm. Otherwise, some languages in this country are beginning to lose value are right. uh, beginning to become extinct. Mm. So I support the statement yesterday I see. made by our colleague, and uh, we should make conscious efforts mm. to develop in the language. How How is the Parliamentary Select Committee um, keeping an eye on the implementation or the enforcement of the policy that you spoke about that for the first three years, in the formative years of these young, uh, young learners, the L1 as in mother language, should be used for instruction. You go to the schools and it's a different kettle of fish. 
how are you looking over the shoulders of the schools to ensure that they're doing what the policy says? Yeah, during the last recruitment of uh, teachers, we insisted that the Ministry of Education to make sure that the teachers are posted to areas that they can speak the language. Because if you send somebody who speaks over to probably a school in a Ashanti region and he's put in class two or class three, uh, he cannot express himself in the language. So he's going to teach even class one or class three pupils in English language. That is the policy. So we have insisted that posting, especially to basic school levels, should be such that uh, they go to areas where they can speak the mother tongue or the first language of the people and make sure that they teach in that language. We are very cautious about that one. Uh, whether the ministry is fully implementing it is what we have not studied or researched into it yet. So we always make sure that the uh, postings are done in a very fair manner. Yeah. Let's look at, for example, the cosmopolitan cities of this country. Some make the argument that, well, Accra, for example, has become cosmopolitan. So we need to move on because if you are having certain other languages dominating, and for example, in certain schools in Accra, like Sam George says, you have people being taught uh, tree, whether it's Kriapim tree, Asante tree, uh, Fanti, or whichever it is, in the basic schools instead of Gan. Then there's really nothing wrong because we have become a cosmopolitan people, one nation, one people, one destiny. What do you say to that? Yeah, it has been a very uh, funny issue for some years now. Uh, I think three or four years ago, the Dasik, they insisted that uh, Dan should be the language of instruction in uh, uh, schools within the Greater Accra region. It is becoming very difficult to implement that because of the cosmopolitan nature of where we find ourselves. So what is important is for me is that well, um, where you have a very dominant population of uh, Akans, it will be difficult to insist that they should uh, teach them in uh, Ga. They may not be able to understand. But if you look at it linguistically, it is to the advantage of the learner also. Because you have the advantage of knowing his uh, mother tongue, an additional language. It has an advantage. So for me, yes, where we live, especially in Accra, different ethnic groups are here. So if we adopt even two languages in the greater Accra, maybe Ga and Akan or Chi or Eze, depending on the environment in which we find ourselves, mm. it can work. But it will be very difficult now. We have found it on the ground. That it is very difficult to insist that uh, they should teach the, the lower primary pupils in uh, uh, Ga. It's going to be very difficult. But if we have a conscious effort towards it. And then in that case, too, uh, the problem we also found out was that we don't have many trained teachers in Ga language. That is another mm. uh, challenge that we discovered, yes. Mm. Mm. But there are more in Akan or Chi than mm. the Ga language. So maybe conscious effort must be made to make sure that uh, uh, those. Uh, uh, teachers in Ga are trained to that. But if you go to rural Ga, right. uh, it is the Ga language that they use. They don't mm. use uh, the Aquapin uh, tree or Asante tree. Right. They don't do that. Yes. So we must mm. make conscious effort to develop our, our languages. And when you see so some parents who are to blame for this, tell uh, me why they, mm. they abandon their uh mm -hmm. and speak english to their words at home every time mm -hmm. yes we have discovered that also and right? this is very bad you see let the child learn english in school when he comes or she comes home pick your mother tongue with your child or children then that will make them understand the culture of the of uh, his or her people so if you are burning it there in the house it is english 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 and it is not 
helping the, the children. Right. So we need to sensitize parents also very well mm. that uh, for the language to develop, right. uh, they should uh, speak it with the children at home at all times. Thank you very much. The Honorable Peter Nochu Koto is a ranking member on the Education Committee in Parliament. We're grateful that you could speak to us this morning. I'm grateful too. Thank you. And what are your own thoughts? You can always share your thoughts and comments with us. We're live on 3FM927 on Facebook. You can tweet at us at 3FM927 on Twitter or X, Instagram as well. You can connect with us. It's important that you do. What do you think? Is your language getting extinct? Is it affecting your culture and your tradition? Do you see certain practices of your culture and tradition as fetish because of a new religion that you have come to accept or adopt? Be it Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Buddhism. Share your thoughts with us, and I'm sure we can have uh, uh, some space to connect also with the the ministry. It's important to understand your stance on this matter, and then also activate the phone lines for you to share your thoughts with us on this particular matter. How are we using our language? Are we really, really using our language or are we losing it? And are we losing it because we feel inferior when we speak our language? What's the story? Share with me. Facebook, for example, Brave Pascal Tonu says it's fact that Ewes can speak multiple languages in Ghana than any other tribe because of how wide they have spread. If you like, debate it. And then it says hashtag community connect is a fact. Well, that's what he's saying. A lot of our comments have been removed by the moderator because they are unsavory for the air kindly keep your language civil all right when you call us it's important that you do i speak to another important citizen of this republic the honorable ablanji fagoma she, she is a traditional leader she's also former deputy minister for tourism arts and culture and she's very enthusiastic about language let's connect with her good morning madam oh man we don't have her on the phone line. please raise her back on the phone line for us do you feel inferior when you speak your local dialect i've had occasion where you know i i spoke with somebody from the uh in Poho area and the person was speaking fanti pure fanti with me so when i inquired further and we spoke further i said oh i come from that part of town but you know we are not many so we, we like to connect with the ones we are here and then I asked the question, what's going on? So the cultural practices that are synonymous with your, um, your ethnic group or tribe, how are you preserving them? And, and then I must say this, it's because people do not understand, for example, what is said during uh, libation, for example. People don't hear what is being said. They don't understand. They have not bothered to appreciate what is being said. So then they assume that, oh, whatever is being done is fetish. I've been joined by another important member of uh, society, a member of parliament for Ketu South constituency, former deputy minister for tourism, culture, and creative arts. 
and she is also a leader of a society. Honorable Ablaji Fagoma, she thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning, Johnny. How are you? I am fine, Mama Dramedo. Now, this morning, I am troubled because yesterday, uh, the Honorable Sam George, Okujetu Ablako, and many other speakers on the floor of Parliament feathered a conversation that had started about two years ago, which was also taken up by the Traditional Council and some others, about the extinction of some languages in Ghana and how we are going about it in terms of how it affects our culture and tradition. Your initial thoughts. Is language that important? So, um, I'm surprised that uh, we are talking about it as if uh, it's the first time. Johnny, even on the floor of Parliament, on the International Mother Tongue Day, mm -hmm. which is set up, right. Uh, around the world, I made a statement on this matter. And before I made a statement, uh, when I was blessed to be the Deputy Minister for Tourism, Culture and Creative Arts by His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, these are the kinds of things that we were promoting. Mm. The Bureau of Ghana Languages has been crying for attention. So it's a continuing conversation. But let's put it uh, in the domain of the education ministry. Right. I recall vividly that uh, Professor Nana James has copiously written on the subject matter. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it is important that children are taught in their mother tongue first. And indeed, if you look at the likes of herself, Nana Jane, Professor Martin Ousu, uh, Professor uh, Bernabdala, Auntie A.C. Sutherland. Look at these people. The, the, have you heard them speak their local languages? Have you heard them speak English? They speak them both fluently. And their pronunciation, their construction, syntax, everything is in place. It just shows that, indeed, if you learn your language, it does not take away the fact that you should be able to speak English properly right. or not. Right. It just enhances what you do. And language, by the way, carries your spirit and your soul. It carries what your values are. And, you know, when the language dies, it dies with a lot of the cultural and heritage uh, um, uh, values that you have. For example, how many young people today know that there's a, a, a leaf that we call sobi, which we have, uh, we have put in palm nut soup, and it's almost like um, you put uh, boma, or, uh, right. boma in, in, in soup. Mm -hmm. Because we don't use the language, mm. I'm sure that it will go with that art of cooking. Right. So you know that there's palm nuts because it's still done. But because mm. we don't say talk about subway anymore, mm. you wouldn't even know that it can go in the soup and make a difference. Mm. So if someone is looking for something that's unique and extraordinary, mm -hmm. they would they should know about subway. Mm. It's a variety. It's a different kind of thing that you 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 can find on a on a on a menu. So it is it is imperative. Right. It is very, very crucial to our mm -hmm. very existence. Mm -hmm. It will offer job opportunities. Look, as I sit here now, I'm sure there are knowledgeable people in a language, right? Right. I did not study it. Mm -hmm. But, Johnny, if I tell you that currently, the Academy, the, uh, Academy of Languages of the African Union, called ACALAN, has commissions promoting languages. Mm -hmm. Ever is one of the languages the African Union is promoting. Wow. Um, it is a cross-border vehicular language mm -hmm. because it's spoken in four countries, right. Nigeria, mm -hmm. Benin, Togo, and Ghana. That's right. I happen to be the interim chair of that committee. Congrats. We are, we are, oh, well, oh, well, thank oh. you. We are looking at how to standardize the other language so that whatever is spoken in, in, uh, uh, in Ghana when you speak that, use the same word in uh, Nigeria, mm -hmm. the community in Nigeria that speaks of uh, mm -hmm. Benin and Togo, they will both identify that this is what you're talking about. Mm. So, 
the Africa, if UNESCO, the African Union, ECOWAS, if they all recognize the importance of our language, why are we in Ghana deliberately, systematically, mm -hmm. and institutionally attempting to make it a monolingual community? Corporate Ghana is guilty too. Mm -hmm. Corporate Ghana will have words that or phrases in one language always promoting that, that, that one language. Mm. We are doing ourselves a disservice. It is important that we re-strategize mm -hmm. and we look at the policy direction that we are going, written and unwritten. Right. Sometimes so, it is subtle mm -hmm. and it is to diminish mm -hmm. other languages and elevate others. GBC works with, uh, I think, about nine of them or so. Mm -hmm. why, are, why is the rest of Ghana uh, 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 reducing it to one language. Why? Why is Ghana doing that? So, Honorable, on that score, and let me welcome uh, Mr. Charles Ahetu Chega, is a former Director General of the Ghana Education Service, is also a leading consultant on educational matters. Uh, boss, thank you for joining us. Good morning. How are you? Um, by the grace of what I'm fine. Great. I, I shall come to you in a bit. Uh, and we will talk about policy then and now, what, what has changed, what must change, what has it been in, in a bit. But, Mama, Mama, you tell me, in Parliament, for example, uh, mm -hmm. over the past eight years, we have had what? The mm -hmm. Asempa budget, Ejuma budget, Impunto budget, mm -hmm. Ajinkwa budget, mm -hmm. uh, Inkabom budget, Inkoswa mm -hmm. budget. And mm -hmm. I have asked a question, for example, Ghana is big, but... Must it all be a certain assembly and kaboom? To, I, I've asked that question. Uh, and, and you have also been in parliament. W what do you make of that? No, I, f I find that, uh, you know, it, there's nothing wrong with promoting what you, what your language. But it's, what is wrong is when you try to make it better than others. It's not only... I agree with you on those uh, headings that we find on, on our budget. Mm -hmm. And as I said, in other corporate uh, uh, promotions, you right. find that um, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. the, the worst part is the lame excuse uh, that right. we don't have the teachers. But if you know the problem, you must find a solution, shouldn't we? That's correct. If you say that... Uh, I, I know we're going to say, my colleague who was at, an actress as I, as I am mm -hmm. many years ago... We used to teach her that you are a girl teacher. Mm. Uh, mm. If you know that we have a, a, a deficit mm. in the teachers that uh, uh, should teach girl, mm. shouldn't you, and uh, we are looking for job opportunities for people, shouldn't it be a policy that if you go and do study girl, you mm. have uh, easy access to employment? Right. Because you know that you must sustain that language. Mm. Right. You see, so which, what I'm saying is that when I was a child growing up, what we spoke in 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 Ga, in right. Ga. right. You see, now we we have just decided that uh, when we travel, wherever we go, we will go with our language and not go and learn the language of the people we are we are we are going to uh, cohabit with. I don't. I, I live with. I do not understand. And it's, it's deliberate, though. Look, it doesn't matter how many times you all bash me for saying this. I'll continue saying it because it is my truth. I say it is deliberate to have only a crappy tree and a santi tree taught in schools in Ghana. Why? Okay. Why? <clears throat> Let, let, let's, right. ask, let's ask Mr. Chega uh, that question. Mr. Chega, so this speaks to policy. And yeah. we do know that there's actually a policy that says that for the first three years in school, basic school that is just learning uh, that, that from Mr. Uh, Peter Not, uh, Notu Kotwe that mm -hmm. it still exists the school. The school. Uh, in the schools that for the first three years, the instruction should be in mm -hmm. L1. That's your mother tongue. Um, yeah. That was the policy then. I want to understand the reason behind the policy and whether or not, as a consultant, you do know if that policy is still being practiced. Well, thank you very much. Um, it, it's a very interesting topic we are dealing with now. Um, go directly to your question. Introduce, essentially, mm -hmm. to prop up another language 
Now, we went into school and all of us were meant to speak English. Then we came from our individual indigenous uh, homes with specific languages into the schools. Now, so it became very difficult for people to mix up all of those things and, 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 and it was difficult. Now, so um, education scholars discovered that, look, let's look at ways by which we can uh, enhance the speaking of English uh, through the use of helping people to understand and appreciate their local language. Right. In that sense, it will become easy to be able to go along in helping to teach English. So we started a process that um, ensured that, well, when children come to school in the, on the first day, um, they don't understand welcome, but they will understand uh, aquaba, they will understand all of those kind of things that we used to say in Akwaba, Wezo, and all those right, things right. in our specific languages. Mm -hmm. So don't tell them uh, 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 welcome. Speak to them in their own languages mm. for them to get settled in mm -hmm. as a way of helping them. Right. Now, this brings us to essentially why we did that. Now, we did that so that we would promote literacy. Literacy has a number of dimensions. And the literacy, we are talking about reading, we are talking about writing, we are talking about comprehension. But children will first think in their traditional language before mm -hmm. they can even link up to any other language. Right. So it was important from that point to begin to, to speak to them in their own language, and then English becomes a subject. Mm -hmm. So once it becomes a subject and they are, they are still communicating their own language, then it becomes easier for them to be able to do the cross-referencing and things in their own languages to be better understand. And if you want to see how this goes, you can see it better in um, the case of um, French, you know, the way we do our French mm, and mm, English and all of mm. that. We still speak English, but we learn French. That's right. But all of us, we, we try to relate all of those things together. So the whole issue about the Ghanaian language in our educational system was, um, let me say, two-pronged. One, to ensure that we keep our Ghanaian language mm -hmm. and help our children to become literate in mm -hmm. our Ghanaian language. Right. So that is the whole essence of it. It is not a basis to try and teach uh, equipping people Ga. No. Mm -hmm. It is not a basis to teach uh, maybe Asante people Dagbani. Mm -hmm. No. But it is a basis to improve our literacy. Right. That will enable us to be able to communicate, to read, and then to write and comprehend a lot of the things that we are being taught I, in, in school. I monitored a conversation with uh, Bola Ray and, and uh, featuring the former Chief Justice of uh, Kufu. And she said yeah. that when she started her education in the greater Accra region, even though she is from Ekwapim or she's of Ekwapim ancestry, she had a girl teacher who said, look, Bring your Ekwapim reading book and then have your yeah. book on the side yeah. so that yes. when you when we read, the whole class is reading in Ga, but you can start reading yeah. in Ekwapim and then okay, eventually she she uh, transitioned from just Ekwapim book to the Ga book. So yeah. she even yeah. spoke very pure, fluid, lucid Ga on that show yeah. and said that is how she got it. At what point did we depart from such a beautiful thing that has, for example, helped the former Chief Justice to become, you know, one that is just centered on, as Honorable Ablachiva Koma said, forcefully making one language the main language of the whole country? At what point? Well, at, at, at the point when we are doing all this transition into independence and stuff, you know, we became, by default, uh, an English-speaking country. And the only way we could do governance was by deciding that, look, if we can get everybody together, we cannot speak tongues. We must speak a particular language that everybody understands, right. and that would move us as a nation. Right. So it is the whole colonialism uh, discourse mm. that we need to re even deal with. So in the light of that colonialism, we still wanted to make sure that our so-called vernacular will stay. Mm. So mm. in order to help people to understand the English language, we deployed that two-pronged approach which ensured 
people to think in their own language and begin to transition into um, English. But but uh, the GES, I mean, children are still punished in school for speaking vernacular, their mother yes. tongue. Yes. That, that's strange, yes. is it not? That's, if that's indeed that's strange. the I policy to, of I, I, the education I, I school, authority. Hmm? Yeah, I went to a school like that um, you know, with this whole nice big chain around your neck learn to speak English and all those kind of things. Hmm. So we had to mix up with all of those uh, processes that will enable us to understand English. And you know, the focus was English. It's not because you are speaking Ga or you are speaking... No, no. So that is where the focus is. But I want to repeat that what we are doing currently in the school, and you know, when we had ministers of state, mm -hmm. if you remember, during my very, very good friends at, um, era as Minister of Education. Right. And here I'm talking about my friend, Professor Amir Kunfi. Right. When he was Minister for Education, mm -hmm. at one meeting, he decided that, no, 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 forget about all this language matter, we are going to learn English. Meanwhile, we had support from countries like Germany mm -hmm. helping us to build our local languages mm -hmm. in, in terms of our, our learning. And now right. that created a big brouhaha in terms of our whole diplomatic relations with Germany and all of that. Now, then they, they realized that mm, that was an error. Now, unfortunately, when Napo came to power, Napo also did not really appreciate the dimensions of the language policy. And then quick, mm -hmm. he went for uh, what, jolly phonics. <laughs> no, now, let's do jolly phonics and then get everybody to speak in English. Then he cites a fine example where mm -hmm. when you go to the Volta region, I am from Kumasi mm -hmm. and my wife is from the north. Uh, what language would my child speak? No, missing the whole point. He did not appreciate the fact that the whole issue of the Ghanaian language in class mm -hmm. was one, for teaching the Ghanaian language mm -hmm. itself, and two, literacy, for using Ghanaian language as mm -hmm. a means of understanding English. So um, that was the core point. And now we, we developed the language policy. Mm. It is still in existence, right. uh, except that because of um, a lack of text and a lack of uh, materials, mm. we are not really doing that policy the way uh, we want to do it. Besides, um, uh, the 11 languages that have been approved mm. uh, uh, have grown. I mean, some other languages have also <laughs> developed and uh, they also want to be studied in school mm -hmm. um, by way of even helping their children to even read the language itself. Mm. And so that thing has expanded. We hear you. But because we are not developing our materials very well, mm. we have a real problem in making sure that we can do that, uh, that, 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 that process. So yeah. the policy has not really changed. And uh, hopefully the policy will improve in the near future because uh, when we get people who understand the whole dynamics of mm. language and uh, uh, language issues. You, uh, you, we'll, we'll you mean, be able to get you mean, <laughs> I thank you very much, sir, for your time. We're grateful. Thank you very That's much. Charles yeah. Aheto uh, uh, Chega. He's a former director general of the Ghana Education Service. Now, Mamaga, I come back to you. And mm -hmm. I, we'll have like, this conversation on the note of culture, given where we stopped with uh, Mr. Chega. The issue of pouring or making libation and how people suddenly have shrouded all of it in um, fetish, uh, whatever. I, I can't find the word immediately. But people make libation. They are actually praying to the even, ancestors. Even, and paganism, they call it, right? Yes. And then people are praying to the Almighty. And people say, this is not good. Don't teach my children. It is evil. It is fetish. You are a traditional leader too. What, what do you say? How do you feel? Well, it saddens me. Uh, and uh, for those of you whose sensibilities are trampled on this morning with my contribution, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but you have to deal with it. Truth is one. Um, I, <laughs> sorry? The truth is only one. Speak it. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Mm -hmm. I cannot understand for the life of me that the things that my forebears practiced, where they lived in truth with one another, even when there was war and so on and so forth, they lived longer, they loved themselves more than those of us who today claim to be Christians. 
or whatever religion you belong to, we we have just thrown the baby with the bathwater away. Mm. There are certain things that we may be doing mm -hmm. as uh, traditional or cultural uh, practices. There are certain things we may be doing in that space that we may want to take out. But to throw everything away is wrong. As I speak, I, I was baptized in the Catholic Church. Right. I am a Catholic, mm -hmm. but I also appreciate the fact that when we pour libation, which, by the way, I did when I was going to contest in 2019. Right. I went to the, the tombstone of my grandfather, mm -hmm. whose name is Gumashi, mm -hmm. and I gave him water, and I said, I'm going into this battle with your maid. If you care to know, you cannot come back as the Gumashi that the world knew before. So help me promote your name and keep it as you would have if you were alive. Wow. Is, does that make me a pagan or a heathen? <laughs> ah, I'm a Catholic. Don't I pray to Mary, Mother of Jesus? Mm. Don't I call, in fact, I, I nearly said my, my, my Christian name, but I, I checked myself before <laughs> you all start calling me with it. <laughs> yes. Eh? I call that saint's name. I call all other saints. I do not get people to. What is wrong with making my, my gomashi, hmm? gomashi right. masia, right. What is wrong with telling him that I'm using your name, so be with me? Mm. There's nothing wrong. I think that we've, we've been, to a large extent, we've been so bla uh, 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 brainwashed that we don't look at anything that is African or Ghanaian mm. as authentic enough as the way in which to get... Uh, to the promised land, wherever mm. that may be, mm. to the point where we, we shun it so much that, look, the, 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 uh, Donnie, mm, yes. this is a matter that touches my heart. Mm. Eh? Right. The kind of opportunities we would have through our cultural space mm. and traditional space to create jobs, to make us different, to mm. promote tourism, to promote faith. Mm. We, we, we throw it all away, and we are chasing up after something we do not even understand. <sighs> I, I, I know that you've seen on my Facebook page that uh, mm. democracy is come. The kind of democracy we are practicing is come. Mm. Because we do not understand it. I think there's nothing wrong with foreign libation and calling on our ancestors to uh, uh, look out for us, mm -hmm. to protect us. And if you believe that there's a God, how do you know that that ancestor is not the one who, whose communication with God will, will make your prayers here on earth answered? Honorable. The, the, the level to which we've been, we've been disconnected mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. is, 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 is sad. But for us to refuse to learn, even in 2024, mm -hmm. the 21st century, for us to still hold on to that colonial legacy is what shocked me. These people have been gone. Those who came and messed us up, they've been gone for so long. But we ourselves mm. have done nothing about it. Right. I'm sorry to call out President, uh, the late President Mills. Mm. God bless you so wherever he is. Yeah. But he's one of the people who made foreign of libation, you know, uh, he, he got it taken out of the program that mm. he was attending. Mm. I am told, if it is not so, then he must forgive me even in his, wherever he is now. Right. But I think that uh, we shot ourselves in the foot by taking that out of our national discourse, right. where when we're having a, a national event, mm. we don't do that anymore. Or uh, we do it uh, piecemeal. Eh? Mm. When we want, we mm. do. When we don't, we don't. But, but yet we are always saying that let us pray before. And you know, you know the shocking part, Johnny? No. We actually tell ourselves to still close our eyes when we are praying. Right. <laughs> I want to thank you very much this morning. We're grateful for your time. And uh, I'm sure we can further so this conversation um, maybe next week. Thank you so much indeed for speaking to us. And uh, let's wrap up the conversation nicely with Dr. Fori Kweku Obrimpong. He's a senior lecturer of applied linguistics. Um, applied linguistics, the University of Education in Winneba. And uh, Dr. Um, Kwesi, uh, Dr. Kweku, Fori Brimpong.
Senior Lecturer of Applied Linguistics, University uh, of Education, Winneba. But wanted to pick his own thoughts on how we can put a nice icing on this one. And we're diverse. For example, if uh, yes, a man of ancestry says, I go at a make a woman, and they say, a man, and he says, cha, 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 ni omani ablao, then they say, hiao, and he says, mena she me, and says, mena she soha, ni ma soha, na ma soha, eh, got a ticket, a tefe, and you buy a nua konya nua, can you nua konya nua, and you could ya nua join you, can you jibu and you genu. If he says that, how fetish is that? Because that's praying in your mother tongue and in your language. But then we we look at it as being a fetish. Unfortunately, you can't reach doctor. My time is spent here. But I'm sure we can have an extended conversation on this matter in good time. As to uh, next week, hopefully. 